All right, guys, welcome back to Nick in China. I'm back in Xi'an. First video I've done in Xi'an in a really, really long time. And today I'm going to talk about a few fascinating things and show you around a place in Xi'an, a building, which to be honest is probably the most famous and most important symbol of the whole city, even more than, you know, the Terracotta Warriors, in my opinion. And that building is the big wild goose pagoda. It's right there. Da Yanta, the big wild goose pagoda, has stood in Xi'an for almost 1400 years, surviving multiple sackings of the city and the deadliest earthquake in human history back in 1556. It remains a key symbol of the city and the best example of a Tang Dynasty pagoda anywhere in China. So a lot of things in China come grouped in like in like numbered groups. I don't really know why this is, but they do. For example, the four ancient capital cities of China, the four great inventions of ancient China, the five elements, the eight trigrams, all these things. And another one of these very famous groups is the four ancient classical novels of China. And they are Hong Lo Meng, which is the dream of the Red Mansion, Shui Hu Juan, which is the water margin, San Guo Yan Yi, the romance of the three kingdoms, and finally, Xi Yu Ji, which is the journey to the west. And it is this book which has the connection with the place I'm in right now. So the book, The Journey to the West, was written by a guy called Wu Chang'an in the Ming Dynasty, like kind of the late 1500s. And it tells a story of a Buddhist monk leaving Tang Dynasty China um, via the Silk Road and heading towards India to retrieve, you know, Buddhist scriptures and bring them back to China. Now the journey to the West is one of the most famous stories, not just in China, but in East Asia. Um, it's much loved, I think, um, it, there's been so many TV shows and movies made about it. And um, although maybe it's not as well known in the West, actually little did I know, when I was a kid in England, there was a TV show on which was actually based on Journey to the West. I didn't know it at the time, obviously. I didn't know it was an old Chinese story. And that TV show was actually a Japanese show, badly dubbed into English, called Monkey, if you remember that show. So this book, what's the connection? Well, it's based on a real person and a real story. Not the monkey guy, obviously, but the monk. Uh, there's a very famous monk in the Tang Dynasty uh, called Xuanzang. And he very famously traveled overland via the Silk Road to India and brought back hundreds and hundreds of uh, Buddhist sutras back to the then capital of China, uh, right here, Xi'an. Setting off on his journey in the year 627, Xuanzang passed through dozens of states before finally reaching India, somewhere between 630 and 633. Xuanzang spent many years in India travelling and studying, and ultimately collected 657 Buddhist texts. Upon his return to China in the year 645, he was highly honoured and chose to devote the rest of his life to translating the wealth of knowledge he had acquired on his travels. So during 7th century China, Buddhism was really flourishing. Um, that was during the Tang Dynasty, uh, when the capital of the country was right here in Xi'an. And it was under the reign of a really famous emperor, uh, Tang Taizong, that the monk Xuanzang set off west via the Silk Road and then the Jade Gate. Uh, the Jade Gate being the old exit point of China. I actually visited the Jade Gate Last year it was in Gansu province. I'll put a video, uh, sorry, I'll put a link to that video just um, up there or there somewhere. So this journey took him 17 years altogether and he came back with hundreds and hundreds of uh, Buddhist scriptures. And obviously the next job that he had was to translate them all, which took a further 20 years. It's a huge chunk of his life. But actually a lot of his translations are actually still in use today, which is kind of amazing because it was so long ago. So the pagoda here was actually built to house all of the scriptures and statues and everything he brought back from his travels in India. Pretty amazing.
if you come to Xi'an, you've got to come and visit it, to be honest. It's like the most famous landmark in the whole city. I think it's the true symbol of the city. It's also my YouTube channel picture. <laughs> and it's a very special place to, to people here in, in, in Xi'an as well. Um, it's one of the oldest and largest pagodas there is left in China. Um, quite a special place. Anyway guys, I'm going to call it a day there. I think that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe and hit the like button and share. That would help me out a lot. So take care, all the best and bye bye.